This tutorial will cover creating a wrinkled bed sheet using two polygon surfaces, a polygon plane and a polygon cube, which will serve as the mattress. We're going to start by modeling the mattress and the polygon plane that will serve as the mattress and the sheet. I'll hold down the space bar. I'm going to go to Create Polygon Primitives Cube. I'll draw the footprint of the shape of the mattress I want and then drag up to give it the height. Now I'd like this to be a little bit more accurate on the edges with some roundness, so I'm going to use the edge loop tool to create that effect. Now the edge loop tool was a window pane, sort of a, an icon with an orange dashed line through the left hand side. If you need to find this on your toolbar, it would be under Mesh Tools, and then you'll see Insert Edge Loop. I'll click on that, and I'm going to quickly go around and place a few of these lines around the perimeter to define the edges of my mattress. Once they're in place, I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to confirm it's what I would like to have. So now that I've got my mattress, I'll go to my Object Mode for that. And now I'm going to go to the Top View. And in the top view, we'll create the polygon plane that will serve as the bed sheet. I'll hold down the space bar. I'll go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Plane, and I'll draw something that will roughly be a bed sheet once it's draped over the contour of the mattress polygon. I'm going to the perspective view, and I'll move that above the mattress. Now we need more geometry because this is comprised of a single face. So I'll go to the Attributes, and under Polyplane 1, you'll see Subdivision Width and Height. I'm going to change both of those to 50. Now the lower the number, the less the sheet wrinkle quality will be. So if you're doing it around 30 or 20, it's really just not going to work that well. The higher the polygon count, the better. One thing I want to point out here is that uh, perhaps you may need to take into consideration, depending on your CPU, I'm creating this entity in its own scene, and then I'll import it into my final bedroom scene afterwards, and that'll just make it a little easier on the computer. All right, now you can see we've got a number of polygon faces. I'm going to go to the FX tab, and in the FX tab, if we look down towards the end on the right-hand side, you'll see a number of icons that look like a orange shirt. With the polygon plane selected, that's going to be the sheet. I'm going to click on the first orange t-shirt with the plus sign. And that's going to make it an end cloth, which means it's going to react with the mattress below and follow the contour. Now, in order to have that follow the contour, I need to select the mattress shape. And directly next to the icon with the plus sign and the t-shirt, there is one with a white arrow. I'm going to click on that. And what that did was it just set that up so that it will resist that polygon plane above once we interact with the two. Now at this point, we have to address the timeline below. This is actually generated by an animation feature, and we haven't talked about animation at all. But if we look at the bottom of our perspective viewport, you'll see that there is a numerical rule. And this represents the frames of the default set for the animation. Now on the far left hand side you'll see there are two boxes with the number of one. And then if you come over to the right hand side, you'll see a kind of a, a replica of those two boxes. And it might have two different numbers and you might have the same. I'm going to leave the one on the left, both of them one. And then all I'm going to do is change the inside one to whatever the number might be here. And I'm going to put in 1000. Now what that means is that it needs a certain amount of frames in which to have this entity drop and start to follow the contour of the mattress. Now once I've set my timeline, I have to set the preferences for a certain feature for the animation process. If I was to go to the lower right hand corner of the Maya interface, you'll see a little orange man with a gear above his shoulder. I'm going to click on that. And at the bottom of the preference window, you'll see a term called time slider. And when I click on that, 
I'm looking for playback directly across from it. I need to make sure the playback speed is set for play every frame. That's also a feature that's necessary for this bed sheet to follow the contour of the mattress once we enact the timeline. Once I've got that, I'll simply close it out. Now, as long as I'm at frame number one, I can simply play this animation and it will follow the contour of the mattress. But I need to kind of point out this VCR control panel in the lower right hand corner of the interface. You'll see there are two white triangles facing left with a white line in front of them. That's to rewind to the beginning. You'll see a mirror image of that at the very end of that playback feature and that would let me wind back to frame 1000. So I'm going to click back on the one at the left hand side of that little tool panel to make sure my playback head is at number one. Now the only other icons we have to address in this panel is this large white triangle pointing to the right. If I was to click on that, it will start to follow the contour of the mattress, but it's sliding off. So I'm going to stop it and I'm going to click on the rewind button to go back to the beginning of the timeline. So now what we want to do is make sure is that our bed sheet sticks to the mattress when it starts to descend. I'll select the mattress geometry and I'm going to go to the attributes. And in the attributes you're going to see the term collision. Now it could be collapsed so make sure that you open it. You'll see the term stickiness below. At this point, you're going to start to do things kind of subjectively, looking for where you would like it to be on the mattress, how many wrinkles, that sort of thing. I'm going to set the sticky here to maybe, I think I'll make it 0.5. And again, this is just a random number to get started. I'm making sure that my playback head has been rewound to frame 1. Once again, I'll click on the right larger triangle. And now we can see our bed sheet is starting to stick to the mattress geometry. I'm going to stop and I'm going to rewind. Now I'd like some wrinkles on this. It's a pretty simple process. I'm going to select the bed sheet and I'm going to move it up and I'm going to rotate it. I'll hit E on the keyboard and I'll give it a slant. Now that it's rewound, I'll play it again. All right, so it's starting to wrinkle, but it's still sliding off. So I'm going to stop it. I'll rewind. I'll select the mattress. And I'll bump up the stickiness. Now I'm also going to select the bed sheet because when I open collision, I also have that as an option. So that might be a place in which I want to add stickiness as well. I'm going to play it one more time before I start to adjust and I'll stop it, I'll rewind, and I'll start to play with the stickiness of the sheet itself. Maybe I'll make that 0.5 as well. And you can see now we've got it staying on the mattress. Now it's pretty simple to get the proportions. You'll see that it's kind of going through or going lower than the actual bed mattress itself. So I'm going to rewind it. I'll stop it, and once I've rewound it, I'll move the mattress, I'll move the bed sheet, and I'll start to scale it. So I'll hit R on the keyboard, maybe I'll taper it, maybe I'll make it shorter. These are all things that you'll kind of subjectively play until you get what you want. So now I'll click on it again to launch it. And now I'm getting a little bit more control over this. Now it's still too narrow, so I'll stop it and I'll rewind it and I'll give it a little bit more width and I'll play with the length again and now I'll go ahead and play it. And I think I still want it to come over the edge of the mattress at the end. That would be simply a matter of stopping the animation, rewinding, and just moving it so it does fall over the edge when I play it again. Now I could 
bring it back even further so it's not falling off the way it is now. But I want to show you something because, you know, often enough a, a bed sheet will taper over the edge of the mattress, especially if the mattress is on the floor. I'm going to put a floor surface in because I, if I was to bring this into my proprietary model now, this would go through the floor geometry. So I'm going to stop the animation process. I'll rewind. I'm going to go to the top view once again. And I'm going to create another planar surface to serve as my floor. Now, if you've got a polygon cube, it's the same function. Now, all I need to do is once I've got that floor surface in place, I'll go back and I'll click on the t-shirt with the white arrow to make it a collider object, which means now when I rewind and play, it will also fall along the contour of the floor. I have exactly what I want at this point. I would probably rewind and I'll put my texture on. I'll right click, assign new material. I'll go to Arnold, AI Standard Surface, and I'll go out and get the texture that I want to use for this. Next, I'm going to animate it. I'll let it run through the timeline a bit. And that looks like it might work pretty well, so I'll stop the animation process. Now, in order to get this into my proprietary scene, I've got to make this into a polygon with the permanent wrinkles on it. So I'll center my pivot. I'll hit Command-D to duplicate. I'll hit W, and I'm going to just pull that out so you can see what's going on here. So if I were to play this animation once again, you can see there is the original bed sheet that generated the shape, and now have the polygon. It's a permanent crease in the geometry. With that bed sheet selected, I would go to File, Export Selection. I'd give it a name. I'm going to use ASCII, and I'll click on my folder and export that selection, and hit Continue. Now all I would have to do is go to my Finish Scene, and I would simply go to File, Import, and I'd locate that .ma with the bed sheet, and I would hit Import. Now it came in right where it had been placed before, right? So uh, you just have to be aware of where you left it inside the scene in which you developed the geometry. And that covers the tutorial on creating a wrinkled bedsheet.